In this presentation, we will work a comprehensive problem related to a not-for-profit hospital. The information is going to be on the left-hand side. We're going to put that information into the blue area on the right-hand side. The blue area here is the general journal. We will be journalizing the journal entries into the general journal and then posting them to our trial balance worksheet. The trial balance worksheet will have three columns. We have a beginning trial balance. We have the adjustments that we will enter here. Then we have the ending trial balance. The trial balance worksheet will be in order with the assets in green, the liabilities in orange, the what would be equity section in a for-profit organization being net assets in the not-for-profit hospital organization here. Under that is what would be the income statement accounts in a for-profit type of organization, still in essence, revenue and expenses. We have the added difficult here, however, of breaking out in the net assets, those between the ones with restrictions and ones without restrictions. We'll see that as we go. We can see that we are in balance given by the green zeros down below. Once we have completed the uh, transactions, we'll do the adjusting entries. Then we'll do the financial statements, including the balance sheet and the statement of operations. The first thing we'll do is hide one of the general journal worksheets. So if we scroll back up, you'll see we have two sets of the general journal worksheets. We will be using both of them, but we want to start off with the one to the left. Therefore, the one to the right is what we're going to hide. We're going to hide this uh, general journal worksheet. To do that, we're going to select the whole columns from column J. Just putting our cursor on column J, left clicking, scrolling over to column N, letting go, right clicking on the selected area and hiding it. So we're going to hide that. Now we've got our worksheet on the right. We've got the general journals that we're going to be uh, using to enter. Then we have the information on the left. First thing, number one, accrual of revenue and gains. So these are going to be all related to revenue and gains. We could think about these as separate type of transactions. We're going to group them together, however, in one transaction. So we have the patient service revenue. We have the charity care. And then we have the contractual adjustments to uh, patient service revenue and other operating revenues. So if we think about the patient service revenue, then we would think that that's going to be the revenue. We're going to credit revenue. We're going to say that these are not going to be collected for cash here. The debit then is going to go to accounts receivable. So let's record the debit first. I'm going to go up top and we're going to say, all right, we got a debit to accounts receivable. We're going to go to accounts receivable and that will be the debit we're going to increase the receivable now i'm going to put the number in last because there's going to be multiple things that will be affecting the accounts receivable note that we have then and so i'm going to also put the revenue in in a second because we're going to put the debits on top and the credits on the bottom as we go through this kind of longer combined transaction the next one says the contractual adjustment to patient service revenue now the contractual adjustment means that typically if we're recording revenue or we have accounts receivable if there's some type of adjustment on it, then we're going to be decreasing the receivable for the adjustment. And then we're going to be reversing this out uh, of kind of like reversing the revenue account because revenue was basically will be overstated once we record the related revenue. But instead of doing that, we're going to have another account called contractual adjustments. So we're going to post the debit then to contractual adjustments. So I'm going to say, I'm going to scroll back up top. We're going to be in the second account, F4 equals we'll scroll down to the contractual adjustments and enter we're going to pick up that debit amount which will be equal to and we'll pick up that 216 760 uh and actually this is the amount the 1 million uh, five twenty eight thousand that's the amount we'll pick up okay so now we'll record the credit so that's going to be the debit side of things now we're going to record the credit related to the service income, the patient service income. This is our major income account. It's going to go up in the credit direction as income accounts typically do. So we have the patient service revenue. And there is that. And we're going to pick up there in the credit side, representing the credits with negative numbers by saying negative of that 3,50228. So there's going to be that account. Then we have the other operating revenues. Now we could think of this as a separate transaction if it was one, if we were going to record it separately as a debit to the accounts receivable, a credit to other operating revenues. So we're going to record the credit here and the debit will be part of our plug up top in accounts receivable. So we're going to pick up the credit, which will be equal to. 
scrolling back down we're looking for other operating revenues and enter so there is that we're going to be on the credit side we're in h6 negative of and we'll scroll back over and pick up that 1 million uh, uh, 3550 so enter there we have that now we're going to go back up on the debit side and we're going to say this will be the uh, debit related to the accounts receivable that will be increasing we're going to do this with our plug formula that will be the negative sum formula so negative sum of these items and there's going to be our transaction so there's our first transaction re related to the revenue type of accounts we're going to post this out starting with the accounts receivable so scrolling over with the accounts receivable we are in cell q4 within q4 we're going to say equals scroll over to that 2,978,350 and enter then we want the contractual adjustments contractual adjustments we're going to scroll down to that scrolling down to the contractual adjustments we are in cell q26 within q26 we're going to say equals scroll back over scroll back up and we're going to pick up that 1,528,000 and enter so there we have that next we're going to scroll back up and we're going to pick up the patient service revenue patient service revenue that's going to be a revenue type of account in the dark blue down below so we are in patient service revenue we are in cell q23 within q23 we're going to say equals scroll over scroll back up once again to the patient service revenue of the 3,502,800 and enter increasing that in the credit direction lastly on this transaction we got the other operating revenues other operating revenues also a revenue account also in the dark blue down below we're going to be in other operating revenues in cell q23 where we will say equals scroll back over scroll back up and pick up the other operating revenues in the credit and enter so there we have that scrolling back down we can see we're back in balance given by the green zeros and the change in the revenue accounts is here all right let's go back over to our data we're going to say that number one has been completed now we're going to go to number two as we go to number two and on we're going to make these green so that we can see which which item we're on as we go number two then says cash received we have interest on investment in assets limited to use so we have the interest that's going to be received for cash and it's going to be limited to use and then we have the collections of receivables so we're going to say for the entire time period in essence these are the cash collections on receivables meaning receivables is going to be decreasing and we're going to be collecting the cash related to it so let's start off we know that cash is going to be going up let's going to start off here on cell e8 within e8 we're going to say this is number two within number two we're going to say cash is going up that's going to be the same as a for-profit and a non-profit straightforward type of transactions we're also going to say that cash that is limited is going to go up because we have in, uh, interest on investment as assets uh, limited to use so we have interest earned which we're going to say cash is received we're going to credit some type of revenue account for the interest being earned however that there's going to be a limitation on the cash and we're going to record that with the account type here so we're going to say that this will be equal to cash that is, that is limited to use so we're going to keep have that cash account then we'll record the accounts receivable going down so we know the accounts receivable is decreasing so i'm going to say that this will be equal to the accounts receivable i'm going to say that's going to be a credit now because we're collecting cash cash is going up accounts receivable going down this will be a credit of the collection on receivable the two million nine sixty three one then we have the investment income with donor restrictions so this eight thousand five fifty was investment income so we're going to scroll back down and pick up the investment income uh without sorry without uh donor restrictions so investment income without donor restriction and enter so there we have that and that's going to be equal to we're going to say the negative of that eight thousand three hundred and fifty so then the cash is going to be going up by that two million nine sixty three and the cash limited to use will be going up by that eight thousand three hundred and fifty 
So this is going to be our transaction. We'll post this out now. We're going to start off with cash up top. So cash is going to be up top. So we're going to go up to the cash account. We are in cell Q3. Within Q3, we're going to say equals. Scroll over to the cash amount and enter. Next, we're going to go to the cash limited to use. Cash limited to use is going to be this account. We are in cell Q7. Within Q7, we're going to say equals and scroll over to that 8,350 and enter. Next, we have the accounts receivable. So the accounts and notes receivable. That's going to be up top. We are in cell Q4. Within Q4, we're going to go into that cell by saying F2 plus F2. Then scrolling back over and picking up the credit of that 2,963,000. Then we're going to go to the investment income without donor restriction. So if we scroll back down and we look for the investment income without donor restriction, we will be in cell Q23. Within Q23, we'll say equals, scroll back over, scroll back up, and we'll be in that 8,350 and enter. So there we have that going up in the credit direction. We can see the effect on the temporary accounts the uh, basically income statement like accounts, the net income type number, and we are back in balance. Let's scroll back over and now we'll ungreen number two. We'll move on to number three. So we're going to highlight number two. We're going to remove the green from number two. We're going to go down to number three, which is a bit of a long one here. We got number three and we'll make that one green. Here we have expenses recorded in accounts payable. We have expenses recorded in accrued payroll. We have amount released from restriction because some of the expenses met the net asset restriction. So we're going to have to think about that case. And then we have the administration expense, the general service expense, the nursing service expense, and the other professional service expense. So we're going to record this basically in a, in a long type of journal entry once again because this is going to be very similar to a for-profit type of organization. We are in essence recording all the activity in one basic uh, journal entry here. Uh, because again, it's going to be something that will be similar to the for-profit type of organization. Therefore, we're going to go to number three. We're going to try to put the debits on top. So we're basically going to start off with the expenses first. Then we'll think about these two items up top. And then we'll consider in a separate journal entry the transaction related to the amount released from restriction because of some of the expense met uh, the asset restriction requirements. Okay, so we're going to start off with the administration expense. So we're going to be up top. We're going to say this will be equal to scroll in back down. We want the administrative expense and enter. That'll be on the debit side. So we're going to say equal and we're going to pick up the debit of the 451,980. Then we want the general uh, service expense. The general service expense is going to be underneath that. So we're going to be here general service expense and enter. That's going to be on the debit side where we will say equals and scroll back down to that 525, 610. Next, we have the nursing service expense. So we're going to say equals, scroll back down to the nursing service expense and enter. That's going to be on the debit side. So we will say equals and scroll over to the nursing service expense and enter. And then finally, we have the other professional service expense which will be equal to, let's see if we could find another professional service expense. Here we have it and enter. That's going to be on the debit side equals. And scrolling back down, we pick up the uh, 346,000 and enter. So those are going to be our debits. Next, we're going to be considering our amounts up top. The amount up top being the uh, 894,000. That's related to the expense recorded in accounts payable. So we're going to say that of these expenses, we're going to increase the accounts payable for the portion of 895, 894,500, assuming we purchase this basically on account. Okay, so we're, or incur the expenses on account. So the liability is going to be increasing by the accounts payable, and the accounts payable is increasing for the time period of the. 894 uh, 500 so that goes up by the 894 500 then we have the expenses recorded in accrued payroll so accrued payroll is going to be increasing so we're going to say this will be equal to and we're going to pick up the accrued payroll 
that's going to be a negative because it's a liability is going to be increasing of the 1,458,790 and enter. So there's going to be our transaction. And this amount in the accrued payroll is actually 1,462,790. 1,462,790. That's going to be the amount that we are picking up over here in the accrued payroll. Okay, so if we add this up, we can see the debits add up to the 2,357,290. Credits add up to the 2,357,290. Debits minus the credits then summing up to zero. Looks good. We're okay to post it. So we're going to post up the activity then. We got the administrative expense. Let's scroll down to the administrative expense. So we're going to be down here. Administrative expense is here. And we're going to scroll over and be in cell Q27. So within Q27, we will say equals. Scroll back up. And we're going to pick up the admin expense. Next, we're going to be picking up the general service expense. General service expense. Scrolling back down. We are in this cell, so we want to be in cell Q28. Within Q28, we're going to say equals. Scroll back over and pick up the general service expense, the 525610. Next, we have the nursing service expense. So scrolling back down to the nursing service expense, we are here. We are in cell Q29. Within Q29, we're going to say equals. Scroll back up to the nursing service expense. We are in cell, uh, we're, we're picking up the 1,033,7. So there we have that. And then finally, we have the other professional service expense. Other professional service expense, scrolling back down. It's going to be in cell Q30. Within Q30, we're going to say equals. Scroll back up and pick up the other professional service expense and enter. There we have that. Now we want the accounts payable. Here's the accounts payable. We're going to be picking that, that up here in cell Q15. Within Q15, we will say equals. Scroll back over, pick up the accounts payable of the 894.5 and enter. Then we have the accrued payroll. Here's the accrued payroll. Here's the accrued payroll in Q16. Within Q16, we're going to say equals. Scroll back over, pick up the accrued payroll and enter. So there we have that accrued payroll going up as well. Scrolling back down, we're going to be back in balance indicated by the green zeros. So that's going to be our next transaction. The next transaction is going to have to do with the second component to number three, which is the amount released from restriction because some of the expense met the net assets restriction. So we're going to release some items from restrictions. In other words, some of these expenses that we had are meeting the requirement for a restriction that was put on some of the assets and whenever we can release the assets from restriction we do so so that's what we're going to do that's what we're going to do here we're going to release assets from restriction so that's going to be these two accounts down below these two accounts called net assets released satisfaction of purpose restriction without donor restrictions and then the same thing with donor restrictions again i would think about these things as kind of like income statement accounts the one with restriction, well, I'm sorry, the one without restrictions will be increasing. That's what we want. We want to remove the restrictions. Therefore, we're always going to be taking the one without restrictions basically going up. If you have to consider them as income statement account type of accounts, it'll go up in the credit direction. Therefore, we will always be crediting this one and we will be debiting this one. And you can think of that in essence as decreasing the one with restrictions. All right, so let's do that. We're going to scroll back over. Scroll back up. We can call this number three, another journal entry number 3B. It's going to be 3B. 3B is going to be a debit to the one with restrictions. And the amount is going to be equal to the uh, 97.5. 97.5. That'll be the debit and the credit. Now the one, the bottom side is going to be the credit. And that is going to be for the net assets without restrictions. So there's going to be our transaction. Let's post this out. Let's see what it looks like over here. We're going to scroll back down. We're going to say that the one with restrictions is going to be in cell Q34 equals. Oh, that's uh, it's not supposed to be down there. We're going to be here equals. And then we're going to pick up the debit. So this is going to go up in the debit direction. It's always going to go up in the debt you can consider it going up in the debit direction but I, I would think of it kind of like a decrease of course decrease it's decreasing the items with restriction 
and then this one is going to be going up in the credit direction and i would consider this as going up because again when you think about this in terms of the financial statements this one is going to be increasing uh it will be increasing because it's the one without restrictions these are always releasing from restrictions it can be a little confusing considering this one's a credit here might it's kind of you want to make sure you're considering these and making these go the correct way it's a credit here it's going to be an increase to the ones without restrictions if you think of it like an income saving account that kind of makes more sense okay so we're going to scroll back over and we're going to say number three is now completed therefore we will ungreen number three i'm going to select those i'm going to right click on it and we will ungreen it then we're going to go to number four select the number four and we'll make that one green so we're going to make number four green number four we have the cash paid so this is going to be the cash paid for the entire type of time period once again you can think of these as separate type of transactions we're going to record them all in essence as if they are one uh, large transactions we have the cash paid we have the interest expense half to the nursing services and half to the general services so we have and we have the interest expense that is paid we're going to be recording them to the expense accounts of the nursing services and the general uh, service expense so that's that's going to be the debit the credit of course will be to cash then we have the payment for uh, on mortgage principal so we're going to be paying off in essence a liability and of course, again, that would be a credit to cash, debit to the liability of mortgage. We're going to combine it in one transaction, however. Then we have the accounts payable for purchases. So that would be, we're going to be paying off the payable. Therefore, we would credit cash, debit, or decrease the accounts payable liability account. We're going to combine them together in one transaction, however. And then we have the accrual payroll. The accrual payroll is what we paid off on the accrual payroll once again same type of thing we would uh, be crediting cash debiting the liability of the accrued payroll we're going to combine this into one transaction so we're going to start off with the first one we're going to take that we're going to basically divide it by two and be posting it to the expense accounts of the nursing service expense and the general service expense this is going to be number four calling it number four here we're going to say this is going to be equal to we're going to look for that nursing service expense there it is and then we want the general service expense the amounts are going to be debits these are going to be going up in the debit direction so we're going to say equals pick up that 288 and divide it by two then we're going to pick up the same number for the general as well so there's going to be our two accounts then we want the current portion of the mortgage payable current portion of the mortgage payable is going to be equal to scrolling back up we're going to pick up the uh, mortgage payable we want the current portion of the payable and enter this is going to be equal to the uh, 546 so 546 there that this is actually going to be a uh, 545 545 then the next amount we're going to have is going to be the accounts payable for purchases accounts payable for purchases will be equal to uh scrolling back over the accounts payable accounts payable and enter and we're going to say that that is going to be equal to the accounts payable for pur purchases the 8366 and enter so there we have that next we have the accrued payrolls so the accrued payroll is going to be our next item we're going to scroll back over and pick up the accrued payroll and enter so there we have that that's going to be the debit of the 1,285,000 and enter and so then the credit is going to be going to cash we're going to credit cash scrolling up we're going to pick up the cash up top and that's going to be on the credit side we're going to be in cell h28 within h28 we'll say negative sum and sum up all of these items and enter so there we have it the debits then equaling the credits we're going to go and post this out we have the nursing service expense so scrolling over we're going to be picking up the nursing service expense we are in cell q29 within q29 we're going to go into it by saying f2 on the keyboard plus f2 then scroll over to that 144,000. then we're going to be taking up the uh, general service expense the general service expense is in cell q28 we're going to go inside it with the f2 plus f2 scroll back over to the general service to 144 and enter next we're going to have the current portion of the mortgage payable so we're going to go up to the mortgage payable we want the current portion we are going to be in cell q17 within q17 we're going to say equals 
scroll over to the mortgage payable and pick up that 545,000 and enter, bringing it down to zero. Next, we're going to be picking up the, um, the accrued payroll, similar portion. We're going to be paying off the payroll. So we'll scroll up to the accrued payroll. We are in cell Q16. Something is in it. Therefore, we're going to go into it by saying F2 on the keyboard plus and then F2. So we can scroll back down to the accrued payroll of the 1285 and enter. And then finally, we have the cash. So we've got the cash down below. We're going to scroll back up to cash up top. We are in, in cell uh, Q3. Within Q3, we will say F2 plus F2 and then scroll down to the cash amount. So we're going to scroll back down, pick up the cash of 2,954,600 and enter. So there we have that. If we scroll all the way back down, we see that we're, uh, we're not back in balance. So we're missing something. It looks like we're missing the accounts payable. So let's take a look at that. That's not going anywhere. So now I'm going to pick up the accounts payable. So let's scroll back over and pick up the accounts payable. And we are in cell uh, Q15. I'm going to say F2 plus F2. And then scroll back down. And we want to pick up the 836.6 and enter. And so there we have that. If we scroll back down now we're back in balance given by the green zeros. So that's the double entry accounting system working for us there. All right. So that's going to be it for number four. So let's go and scroll back over to number four. We're going to ungreen number four. I'm going to select number four, right click on it, and we'll make that ungreen. And then we're going to go to it number five. Let's green up number five. Make that one green. This one says we have interest accrued on investment in assets limited to use. So it's basically saying that we have the interest that has been accrued, but it has not yet been earned. So this is kind of like an adjusting type of entry. This is an adjusting process entry. Interest has been accrued. We have not yet gotten the cash. Usually we do this at the end of the time period. We're going to enter that adjusting uh, entry now. So we're going to say number five. We know that, uh, that we didn't get cash. What we got instead is basically a receivable. We're going to have to record the receivable for the interest receivable but it's also limited to use. So we're going to say it's going to be the uh, interest receivable assets limited to use. That's going to be the debit. The credit's going to be the investment income without donor restrictions. So this is going to be the credit side, the income going up in the credit direction. We have the investment income without donor restrictions. That's going to be equal to the amount of that 1,630. That'll be the debit that'll be the credit here's going to be our transaction we're then going to post this out we're going to go to the interest receivable first so we're going to scroll back up top we're looking for the interest receivable uh, assets limited to use that's going to be in cell q9 within q9 we're going to say equals scroll back down to the uh, 1630 and enter so that increases here Next, we're going to scroll back down and we want to pick up the investment income without donor restrictions. So investment income without donor restrictions, that's going to be in cell Q25. Within Q25, we're going to go into that cell by saying F2 plus F2. Scrolling back over, we want to pick up the credit of the 1630 and enter. So there we have that increasing. Scrolling back down, we see we're back in balance given by the green zeros. The temporary accounts, you can see the effect here. This is, in essence, the equivalent of net income. All right, now we're going to go back over, and number five has been completed. So we're going to ungreen number five, indicating that it has been in, uh, completed. Now we're going to go to number six. Number six is going to be the depreciation. So depreciation. We have depreciation on the building. We have depreciation on equipment. Now, the thing that's going to be a bit different here than it would be in a for-profit type of organization is that we're going to be breaking out the depreciation between nursing services, professional services, and administrative and general services. So by, in essence, the function of what is happening. We're going to break that out in accordance with the 45, 15, and then 20 to administrative, 20 to general. And so that'll add up, of course, to the 100%. So the normal type of journal entry that we would have for depreciation, you'll recall, 
for the land or for the building and the equipment. We put them on the books as an asset rather than an expense when purchased. And then we're going to allocate the cost uh, according to the matching principle or the expense recognition principle uh, as we use or consume these assets. We're going to do that typically by debiting depreciation expense, the expense side, and crediting accumulated depreciation, which is going to be a contra asset account as it goes up in the credit direction contra to other assets. The net assets will then decrease at, as that happens. Okay, but here, of course, we're not going to be debiting then depreciation expense, but rather by function, the administrative expense, the general expense, the nursing service, and the other professional. So the transaction will look like this. Instead of a debit to the depreciation expense, we're going to debit these categories. This is number six of administrative expense, general expense, and then nursing expense and other professional expense. Okay, and then the amount is going to be broken out by those percentages. So I'm going to do this by saying this is equal to, I'm going to say the sum of, we're going to sum up these two numbers. I'm going to put the brackets around them now. So sum up those two. So we use the sum, make sure to close the brackets. And then I'm going to say times and we're looking for the administrative, which is down here. That's actually the last one, 20%. So we want 20% of these depreciation related to the building and the equipment. So these, in essence, you could think about it this way. Just add these two numbers up, multiply it times 20% or 0.2. So that's going to be the 51.3. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to say equals the sum of these two numbers, close the brackets, times... The general is also 20%. That same 20% is going to the general. And then we're going to do the same for the nursing. So we're going to say equals the sum of these two numbers, close the brackets, times. And then we're going to pick up the nursing, which is the 45%. So the 45%, those two numbers times 45%. Then we want the other, which is going to be equal to the sum of and then we want these two numbers, close up the brackets, times, and then we're going to be picking up the 45, or the other is going to be the 15%. Yeah, it's going to be the 15%. And that's, so that's going to be the 38,475. All right. Then we're going to record the credits, which are going to go to the accumulated depreciation. So we're going to scroll back up. We're going to pick up the accumulated depreciation related to the building. And then we're going to pick up the accumulated depreciation related to the equipment. The amounts then on the credit side are going to be the negative of the building, that 122.5, and a credit of the 134,000 and enter. So there we have that. There's our transaction. Here's the debits and credits. The debits minus the credits equaling zero. We can go ahead and post this out now. So we have the administrative expense. So we're going to scroll up to the administrative expense. We are in cell Q27. Within that cell, we're going to go into it by saying F2 plus F2. Scrolling back over and picking up the admin expense of the 51.3 and enter. Then we have the general service expense. The general service expense is here. We're going to be in cell Q28. Something is in it. Therefore, we're going to say F2 plus F2. Scroll back over and pick up the general service expense of the 51.3. Next, we have the nursing service expense. So here is the nursing service expense. We want to be in cell Q29. We're going to go into that cell by saying F2 plus F2. Scrolling back over to the nursing service expense of the 115425 and enter. Next, we want the other professional service expense. That's going to be here, other professional service expense. We are in cell Q30. Within Q30, we're going to go into that by saying F2 plus F2. Scrolling back over and picking up the other professional service expense and enter. Now we're going to pick up the accumulated depreciation side of things. So let's scroll back up and pick those up. So we'll scroll back up. We're in the accumulated depreciation related to the building in cell Q12, where we will say equals, scroll back down, 
and we want the credit of the 122.5 that increases the credit balance which decreases the book value then we're going to have the accumulated depreciation lastly of the equipment so accumulated depreciation of the equipment we are going to be in cell q14 where we will say equals scroll back down to our credit of the 134,000 and enter so there we have that and that of course increases the credit balance decreasing the book value which is of course the cost minus the uh, minus the contra asset account of accumulated depreciation we're back in balance here this is what we have so far you can check your numbers so far this is where we are at at this point in time next time we're going to continue on we're going to have to unhide some cells in order to continue on that's what we'll do next time